The Windspace G2 is a gravel frame that has quite an impressive spec sheet and quite an impressively low price. It's made from carbon fibre, has a ton of mount points on it for bikepacking, a threaded BSA bottom bracket, a quite tall and slack gravel focus geometry, and huge tyre clearance for up to 700c by 50mm tyres. This frame has caused quite a stir because of the low price point and the high flexibility to it. I've been riding one for a couple of months and I have some thoughts on what people need to know before they buy and before they build. Just a few things before we kick off. Firstly, this was sent by Winspace for review, but I can assure you it is fully independent and all of the editorial is mine. Second, the full build will be listed below, so if you want to ask what any of the certain parts are, it's all down there. Third, this is a build guide, not a full review. That'll be coming in a couple of months once I've had more time with the full bike. Finally, I'm gonna be quite thorough with this, but I don't want you to get the impression that I dislike the frame. This is just what I do. People might spend a lot of money based on what I say. So I want to make sure that I am thorough and scrupulous with what I say about the frame. I actually do think there's a lot of good here in this whole package, but there's just a lot of things that I think people need to be aware of before they buy and before they build. So this should help you either make your decision or build the bike in a way that gets the best out of it. With that said, let's talk about geometry. And this is a crucial thing to do your research on before you spend any money. First, so you know whether it'll fit you properly. And second, if you wanna know how it's going to ride, you can get that from just looking at the geo charts. Starting with the sizing, you do need to have a close look at this because it doesn't exactly fit with what you might expect across other bike brands. So if you always ride a medium or a large, you shouldn't just go ahead and order a medium or a large. For example, I usually ride a large or a 56. I ended up getting a medium in this particular frame. As far as the ride is concerned, the G2 has a fairly unique geometry. It has a tight rear triangle. It's fairly short through the middle, so it doesn't have a particularly long front center on it. And it has quite a slack front end. And that gives it a very unique sort of ride characteristic. It's very agile, perhaps a little bit twitchy. Really, you know, you could use either of those terms depending on sort of what your preference are. It also has quite a low bottom bracket on it, so that does make it an overall very aggressive gravel bike. So make sure you know that before you drop your money and make sure that you're sort of okay with that. So with that, let's talk about the facing test. For those who aren't aware, facing is the process of using cutting tools to remove factory imperfections. And yes, every single bike that comes out of the factory does have them. It's something that used to be fairly commonplace, but has become more rare over time. The end result of facing is that all of the interface points between frame and components are flat and square. That means that it builds better and it's quieter and all of the parts last longer over time. I made a full video about it if you want to watch and get the full rundown on what facing is, but yeah, that's the short version of it here. It's a good indicator of how thorough a factory is and what their commitment is to the quality of the final product. It's also something I personally paid for as I did for the entire build process. So the frame might have been free, but it sure cost a decent chunk of my own cash to make this content. Now the general feeling from Pete, the mechanic who faced this bike and has faced hundreds of bikes over the years, maybe thousands, I don't know, is that the Windspace G2 was kind of fine. Neither good, neither bad, kind of right in the middle. And given the price point that this frame starts at, that's sort of an okay result. Don't really have any particular problems with that. The high points on the headset and the bottom bracket took a bit of work to get out, but weren't overly hard. What did take a little bit more work was the brake mounting points. They have actually put aluminium inserts in them and those were quite flat and square, but the carbon buildup around it meant that there wasn't sort of a flat mounting surface to put the brake calipers on. So a decent amount of carbon had to be taken off around those to make sure that that surface was sort of flat and square. And that's really important if you want to have brakes that are easy to align and run quietly. And a lot of the reason why some brakes squeal and just do not ever seem to be quiet is because the brake mount points on the frame are just not flat or square. I do want you to keep in mind that the price of the frame does not necessarily translate through to the quality of the finishing of it. Sometimes extremely expensive frames are finished very poorly. Sometimes quite cheap frames are finished very well. So for the wind space being sort of average on expectations, that's a decent result. Just a quick note on the threaded bottom bracket. I'm not gonna give it too big a pat on the back for having threads because to me, manufacturing quality is far more important than the design of the bottom bracket. 
I've had press fit and threaded bottom brackets that have been really good, quiet, fantastic, no problems. I've had press fit and threaded bottom brackets that have been an absolute nightmare. They never stopped making noise and were just utter garbage. Manufacturing quality matters more than how it was designed. That's usually where the problems start to happen when someone has to actually make the thing. I will talk more about the quality of this bottom bracket in the final review. The steerer is going to be quite a hot topic, I feel, because Winspace has made a very interesting choice with this. They have gone for an internally routed design for the fork steerer. That means you can drop a hose straight down the front, through the head tube, into the fork and into the brakes, and it will look nice and clean. Now, if you're not planning to do that, they have sent only a wedge that is 20 millimeters long that sits on the top edge of the stem. The lower edge of the stem is clamping over a void. There is nothing there. And if you have a look at this footage with the tune stem that I've used, you can see just fresh air behind there. I emailed Winspace about this and I said to them, I think they should put in a much longer wedge that would fill up that gap because I really don't think there's gonna be that many people who are wanting to run internal hosing on a gravel bike like this and particularly at this price point. Now their response to me was they feel the reinforcement offered by the wedge is enough to allow a safe clamping of the steerer tube by a stem. And well, that's what they said. Personally, I am never gonna take risks with this particular part of the bike. I don't like the idea that the lower edge of the stem is clamping over a void. So what my mechanics did was they basically cut out a section of the excess steerer tube and sort of worked on that to be basically a perfectly fitting extra long wedge that slid down and it's just really nice, sits in there flush and it helps distribute that clamping force evenly around this, the steerer tube. I really would like to see Windspace include a much longer wedge, maybe 120 mils long, just to make sure that it can fill up the full gap. They think that their system is sufficient. You know, I do think that a lot of people are gonna not want the design that they've given here. Now let's talk chain slap because there is a decent amount of it because of how they've designed those wacky, really low dropped chain stays. I'm running SRAM Force Wide with a two by chain ring setup and my chain is already on the verge of being too short. So I really can't take any links out. Even with that, the chain does impact the lower edge of the chain stay quite a lot, whether I'm on the big ring or on the small ring. You go over some bumpy terrain and that chain is banging into the frame. There's not really much I think you can do about that, but I think that if you get protection on that part of the frame from new, then it won't really be a problem. It'll make a bit of noise, be a little bit annoying, but it'll make far less noise, but it'll also protect the paint and protect the carbon underneath it. So do that from the start, and I think it shouldn't be too big of an issue for you. Just a quick note that I'm not sure whether one by drivetrains will be any better or worse for chain slap, so I can't really answer if you have any questions. Now let's talk a little bit about the ride quality. I will talk about it more in the final review. It is very agile and it's very active. And for that reason, I think that the best format for this bike is with 700C wheels and in quite big tires. It can accommodate 700C by 50 tires. And I think that would be a really great way to enjoy it and ride it. I'm running 700 by 40s. They're a very low grip tire, the American classic aggregates. And I kind of don't think that's really getting the best out of the bike because with that agile and a little bit twitchy geometry, it does want to brake traction quite fast when you have tires that are sort of a lower grade of grip. If you're riding on compacted gravel roads most of the time, that's not really a big issue. But if you do want to take them off on sort of more trails and places that do require a bit more grip, put bigger tires and a more grippy tire on them. I do think that will help you get the best out of it and it'll help mitigate some of the character that is in the frame. It is a lot of fun to ride, but if you want a really relaxed and a sedate gravel bike, this is not it. I actually think that a really good comparison over on the roadside is the Specialized Alley, which is one that I have ridden and owned for years now. It's a little bit bonkers, but it's also a lot of fun. So just make sure you know that before you buy.
Just some final thoughts. I think that there's a lot of good in this package considering the price, and I think this is gonna be a really hot seller. I think Winspace has done a really good job with giving you everything in the box that you need to put a decent build together. I do want to see a longer wedge though. I think that will be really important, and I think that a lot of buyers will really appreciate that. The full review will be coming in a couple of months. And until then, I need to go out and just have some fun on this thing. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you so much for joining me as always. Don't forget to ride safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.